Hey guys, um, today we're going to show you how to build one of these. This is a uh, portable power box for camping, uh, for kayaking. Uh, matter of fact, that's what why I started building these. I've, I've made a couple of these now. Uh, this is this is the first one I made. Power switch and gauge. And then you've got USB outlets. And what I'm going to do with this one is my wife and I started kayaking. And I needed something to run power to all my GoPros, uh, to charge my iPhone. And then, of course, I like to fish and fish finder. So, uh, anyway, I built a couple of them now. And this was the first one that I built. And you can see one of these cameras will catch it. I've got it hooked up now, and what it's doing is it's powering this GoPro over here while I'm filming. Anyway, this is the first one I built. This is in a Harbor Freight Pelican case. Uh, I really don't think the case is big enough to do much more than what I've got going on here. Uh, but in this one, I've got a USB on this side with two USB plugs. This is a USB as well. It's a dual, and it's also a battery gauge. I don't know. Let's see if I can show you that. And then in the middle, we have just a standard 12-volt cigarette lighter plug. This is done with a 12-volt, uh, 7.5 amp hour battery. And then this one that's going to go on my kayak this one's done with a 12 amp hour battery and it's because I'm going to use this one to run my fish finder. So today we're going to build another one, but uh, this one's going to be for my wife's kayak. So the first one was for my brother-in-law, he was a guinea pig, then I made me one, now I'm going to make my wife one. So stick around and we'll see what, uh, we'll see what we can do, see what kind, of, uh, what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started, and right off the bat, this uh, Harbor Freight ammo box was on sale when I was there two or three weeks ago. It was it was on sale for five bucks. It's usually eight or nine dollars. The the downside is I, I don't like those stickers on it. I like putting my own stickers that I make on there. Uh, so you have to pull them off. And the first one I did that you can see in the bottom of the screen on the left side. That one was a royal pain to get off, but this one, it, it came pretty much, it just came right off. Uh, the other one, it was a totally different thing, my brother-in-law's box. So, now that those are off, there's the battery. That's from Walmart. It's a 7.5 amp hour battery. Then right here, these are just little eBay switches, 12 volt switches. And... I'll put a link to everything below. Those are the connectors I've gotten, or the spade connectors. Every, and like I said, everything below, I'll have it linked below. Now this is the USB uh, 12 volt gauge and USB outlet. Then this one, this is just a regular USB outlet. And both of these came from eBay as well. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon as well. That's just a cheap LED light. I bought a set of them. And then of course you gotta have some red wire and some black wire. Now these connectors, um, these are watertight connectors. And later in the video you'll see what I'm talking about. When you put it in and then once you put your wire through and, and squeeze it down, it, it clamps on it. Those are my uh, crimpers, my wire strippers, and then I've got some little uh, wire cutters that I like to use for wiring. Then you're going to need a whole bunch of butt connectors and spade connectors. And you'll need to get some of these. These are SAE 12 volt connectors. And the link will be below. And 
it makes it it makes it where you can plug the charger in or plug accessories in. So we're going to get started and what we're going to do right off the bat I'm going to lay the the USB outlets on there and figure out where I want them and then I'm going to tape I like to put tape on these where I'm going to drill my holes that way you can you can mark on the, on that not mark on the box and it helps when you go to drill the holes you don't scar up the box you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit I I kind of screwed up my box a little bit when I was drilling the holes. So I just I just kind of eyeballed center left and right best I could just to draw a center line and then uh, make a line just just a visual center line so you don't get uh, out of bounds or whatever. And then I laid each outlet up there and just kind of marked the center of that. And this is the other side. This is the little hole for the SAE wire that's going to go in in through the water tight connector. And this one was a little bit, I, I did it just a little low. I should have done it a little bit higher. Here I'm putting the tape on the side. Um, I ended up putting the LED light on the side and then two switches on the side. Uh, one switch for the main power and then the other switches to turn the light on and off. I figured it would be a nice little treat for my wife to have on her box so if we end up on the water after dark right here's what I'm talking about if you can see around that switch I, I didn't tape this one and where I'm pointing at with the pen right there was not pretty <laughs> it's it's not real obvious on camera but if you're standing there looking at it it's it's pretty ugly so that's why the tape was there is to help avoid that now, that those lights, I think those lights were uh, a four pack, and four of them were, I think it was seven or eight dollars, and um, I ended up getting two of them. I'm going to put a bunch of them on the inside of my boat, and so I figured I'd put one on there for, for my wife. So, now that it's all laid out, it's about time to go outside and drill the holes. Those two uh, are going to be hole saw. Those are those are going to be uh, unibit, and that'll be with a unibit. Then the two mounting holes for that LED light are just eighth inch drill bit holes. So nothing fancy here. I'm just sitting out on the porch, drilling some holes. I sped it up immensely. I didn't want you to guys have to sit through just n nonsense. Anyway, I, this video is going to be way too long as it is. So now we're back in the house. I'm going to pull all the tape off and get started putting it together. Nothing to it. Just get it off. And then once you get the tape off, you need to check your holes, the back side of the holes like I'm doing here. I take my X-Acto knife and just get the little excess off for where the drill kind of went in. It's no big deal. It's pretty easy. Then uh, running the leads through for the LED power light, or not power light, the courtesy light. And it's got a little rubber gasket on the back of it. That's why I'm having to hold it kind of funky. I've got the screws in it and trying to get it all lined up and get it pushed in. By the way, all this stuff, uh, it either will have a rubber gasket that came with it or I'm going to add some goop to it down the road. And it, just a disclaimer, this box is water resistant. It's not waterproof. You're not going to be able to dunk it in the water and it's going to be fine. So if you throw your boat, if you roll it, your box is going to get screwed up for the most, probably. Now note on these switches, it's a tight fit and that's good. The tighter the fit, the better. And they're just press fit. They've got little rings on them, retainers. You press them in, they snap, and they're in. Now on those switches, there's a circle and a line. The line is on, so I would push it up. 
Here I'm just cutting the excess of the bolts off from the LED light. Nothing, nothing, no problem. Just take some linesman pliers and yeah, they cut right off. Now this is where I was talking about. I put that hole just a little too low and so it got into that molding and I had to actually screw it in from the outside into the nut. The nut wouldn't spin on. But on a positive note, it can't spin off either. So there's you can see once you put your wire through and then tighten the outside nut down, it squeezes down on the wire and makes it watertight. So that fitting is completely watertight. Now to put the USB outlets in, you just, like I said, you drill the hole with the proper size hole saw and then it's got a ring on it. It's got a, a rubber washer on the back on the outside. So then once you screw the ring on the inside, it sucks it up against the plastic and it's, it's watertight. Then once you get those on, you're pretty much ready to start wiring. You got to check everything, make sure things are going to clear. And that's what it will look like. Now we're ready to do some wiring. This is the charger I bought and the link will be in the description and that's why I wanted the SAE connector for. Now you notice uh, I, I had a shot previously where that, that was already installed but I kind of got it a little backwards here. I'm putting the battery in to see what kind of clearance I have and you'll see here there's plenty of clearance for all the wiring now later not in the, it's not in the video but later after I got everything done uh, I cut up some foam that I had just any a pool noodle any kind of foam that you have and I pushed it down inside around the battery so the battery's not going to move around so now it's just a matter of uh, figuring out your wiring and how you want to do it. Each, each box is going to be a little bit different. So you, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into a huge detail on the wiring just because like I said, every box is going to be a little bit different. Uh, matter of fact, all three that I've made are completely different in the way they're wired. And I just, I'm just kind of experimenting still, but you know, when you're dealing with 12 volt, red is hot, black is ground that's pretty much it <laughs> so uh, as long as you keep that in mind you're going to be fine uh, the switches they, they can be a little bit confusing because they've got three three posts on them so and and then the uh speaking of that the switches and the usb outlets the ones that i got the silver post were the power post and the gold post were the negative posts. So that might be something to keep in mind. Um, on the three post switches, as long as you put the negative to the negative one, you're going to have power going into the switch and power coming out of the switch. And so what that's going to do is it's, it's interrupting the power it's, or it's switching the power on and off. So it doesn't matter which one you put the positive one on that's coming or going as long as they're on the right post if that makes sense put the negative on the uh, on the gold post or the goal post <laughs> and then put your positive on one of the silver ones and then put your other positive that's either coming or going on the other one and you're good so a lot of this stuff is just daisy chained together. Uh, you know, as long as it's getting 12 volts, it's happy. Right here, I'm just I'm checking to make sure everything's going to be able to be routed the way I want it. I want to be able to have it kind of out of the way. You know, you want to leave yourself enough wire that you can push the wires out of the way if you want to. Now, right here, I'm making a stupid mistake, and I'll tell you about it in a second. 
right there's where I realize it. <laughs> I uh, I hooked the negative into the po the positive wire that I had set up to go to the battery. So now I've got to take it all back apart, cut the butt connector off, put a new butt connector on, <laughs> and then and then put it all back together. And thankfully, I was out of shrink. Uh, shrink tubing so I'm using electrical tape instead of shrink tubing because I didn't want to go back to Home Depot so I got it all squared away now it's just a matter of uh, once you get your your whip made and your, or your daisy chain whip made just get everything plugged in in the correct place and make room for that battery to slide in you gotta gently push the wires out of the way bring the battery in push it where you want it to go then like I said just make sure you're hooking positive to positive and negative to negative and you'll be you'll be pretty good you can see right there there's there's room to do the wiring in that other box that I made my brother-in-law's in there wasn't hardly room to do diddly squat. So now it's just a matter of plugging it all in, get the wires out of the way, close the lid, and let's see what we got. It works. Power lights on. I'm a happy camper. The outlets are reading voltage. They're good to go. And the light works. So that's cool. Now I'm gonna turn the lights off real quick. It doesn't do it justice. The camera doesn't doesn't do it justice at all. It's uh, the light's a lot brighter than it seems. It'll be plenty for my, my wife's kayak. Like a spooky movie. So guys, there it is. Only, there's only like one thing left to do after I stare at it for a minute. Put a sticker on it and call it good. And the, the, the model numbers are not model numbers. That's just our initials. <laughs> so there it is. There's the, uh, the beauty shot, the B-roll shot, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I didn't put any wires in the lid of this one. I put wires in the lid of mine and I was trying to avoid it on this one and it turned out really well. You can see there, if you turn the switch on, it'll start charging the phone. So that's it, we'll be using this thing all summer long. Charge it up every time we're about to go out and do some kayaking and we'll have power.